Hello guys! Did you ever think about why is it that whenever we clean a room with time it becomes messy again? Well, it's all because of entropy, my favorite thermodynamic quantity. It is actually the measure of the randomness or disorder of a system. It is a state function, so it depends only on the present state of the system, not on the path by which the system arrived at that state. So the change in entropy equals to the entropy at the final state minus the entropy at the initial state. But let's clarify a little bit more what does entropy mean. So let's say that I have a chamber right here. And in this chamber, I'm going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little molecules, gas molecules. What do you think? What will happen to these gas molecules with time? Well, they have some kind of kinetic energy, right? So they are going to start moving around into all different directions and then bounce around all over the place. So with time, I'm going to end up with a picture where all these seven molecules molecules are just all over the place. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so basically what happens with time, the randomness in the position of these molecules in my closed system increases. And this is the main idea behind entropy and the second law of thermodynamics. So basically our universe is a perfect isolated system. And the second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy or disorder of the universe as an isolated system will always increase over time. So basically, if you want to keep your room clean and neat, but you are not trying to clean it up, the entropy or the disorder will increase in it. I think it's really funny blaming a messy room on thermodynamics. So, but let's go from here. So if the entropy of the universe increases over time, that means that the entropy can never be negative in the universe. And because we learn that all real processes are irreversible, they will result in an increase in entropy of the universe. So when we are looking at an irreversible process, the change in entropy for the universe going to equal to the change in entropy of the system plus the change in entropy of the surroundings, which is always going to be larger than zero. For a reversible process, however, the change in entropy of the universe equals to the change in entropy of the system plus the change in entropy of the surroundings, and this will equal to zero, but it can never be negative. Okay, I hope this makes sense. Let's take a look at a couple of examples on figuring out whether the entropy of a system increases or decreases. Okay, so now we are talking about different systems, not the universe as a whole. So let's start with melting a solid. What do you think? What happens when we are melting something? Well, in solids, we have the molecules or atoms in one place, right? They are resonating. When it starts melting, we are going to get a liquid in which the molecules can actually pass each other. So the randomness of the system increases. So from here, this means that actually the change in entropy in this case is going to be positive, which means that the entropy will increase as my solid is melting. Now, how about cooling a liquid. Well, we know that the temperature is related to the average kinetic energy. And when in a liquid molecules just move around, they have a certain speed. As we start cooling it down, their speed slows down too, right? Their average kinetic energy. This means that when we are cooling a liquid, the randomness of the system will also go down because my molecules will be moving relatively slower, right? So it's going 
going to be negative, it goes down. How about vaporizing a liquid? Well, in that case, we have a liquid where the molecules can pass each other, but we are going into the gas phase where the molecules are really, really far away. So that will definitely increase the randomness of our system, creating a positive change in entropy. Remember that the change in entropy equals to the entropy of the final minus the entropy of the initial state. So if in the final state you have more randomness, you are going to end up with a positive change in entropy. Now, what about when we have a reaction, liquid water making solid water? So this is simply freezing. Right? So in that case, we are going to have actually a decrease in entropy because we are going from a liquid state to a solid state. I hope this makes sense. Now let's take a look at a couple of other reactions. So in option E, I'm going to start with two moles of SO2 gas and one mole of O2 gas. And I'm going to create two moles of SO3 gas. Well, because I started with two different types of molecules and the total of two plus one moles and I created only two moles of gas, well, my randomness actually decreased, right? So in this case, my change in entropy will be again negative and it's going to go down. Now, what about the next reaction? In case of option F, I start with two moles of carbon solid and one mole of oxygen gas. And then I'm going to create two moles of CO2 gas. Well, because I created from one mole of gas, which has a really large randomness in it, right? Two moles of CO2 gas, which again has a really large randomness in it compared to the two moles of the solid, where I don't really have too much entropy compared to a gas, I will actually increase the change in entropy. So it's going to be, again, a positive volume. And what about the last option? We have sodium chloride, which is a solid, and it dissolved in water, creating sodium cations and chloride ions. What do you think? Will I increase the randomness? Definitely, not only I went from a solid into an aqueous solution, but I also created from different ions that are stacked together, ions that can actually move around. So again, the change in entropy in this case will be positive, so it goes up. All right, I hope this makes sense. We will talk more about entropy in the next videos. See you there.